Hello, uh, welcome to this tutorial about editing Milky Way photos in Lightroom. Uh, my name is Seth Hamill. I'm a professional photographer in Design National Park area, um, owner of Enlightened Photography Excursions. Uh, we're a team of professional photographers who guide and teach landscape photography in the area. So if you are uh, coming to town, feel free to look us up and uh, check out the link below. Uh, this tutorial is really all about the editing portion of Milky Way photography. We'll create another video uh, concerning settings uh, in another tutorial. But I want to give you an overview. Uh, by the way, I'm using Lightroom 6. If you are still using Lightroom 3 or 4 because you haven't wanted to update to the Adobe Cloud system that's being used now, I would highly encourage you to upgrade uh, $10 a month. It's a year contract. You get Photoshop in Lightroom and uh, the tools are very, very powerful. So it's well worth it. Um, before we get going, I just want to point out each of the tools that I use during the process. Uh, the crop tool, usually to just rotate a little bit. We'll use this graduated filter to make specific adjustments to the sky. Uh, we'll use the brush tool specifically to enhance the drama of the Milky Way section. Uh, I use the basic tab here uh, quite a lot. Many of the adjustments are done in this tab. Uh, we will quite possibly use this HSL. We use detail for noise reduction. And in this specific image, we're gonna use lens correction because we have some pretty bad uh, distortion happening. So let's go, th go through all of those things. Uh, one of the very major things about Milky Way photography is making sure that you get the white balance correct. Uh, originally, with this image, I shot at a white balance of 3600 Kelvin. I've actually since changed since I shot this image. Uh, now, while I'm in the field, I'll set my white balance uh, to a custom Kelvin of 4200, somewhere right in that range. The reason why that is, is there's a broad range of colors that happen in the Milky Way and in the sky. So there's blues, greens, uh, purples, orange, and yellow. So there's a lot going on there. Right now, this image is a little too cool. It's a little too blue. Um, getting the white balance is going to show us a great range of colors. So I've figured out this trick, uh, which I like quite a bit and use uh, pretty much all the time, is I will take the saturation slider, bump it up to 100, and I'll take the vibrant slider and bump it up to about 50. Okay, somewhere in, right in there. So obviously we're not gonna leave the image this way at all, but what's gonna happen here is it's gonna allow us to see uh, more vividly the range of color. So I'm just adjusting the temperature slider right now to try and get the broadest range I can get. And right now we're doing pretty good. Like I was saying, 4,200, that's what I set my white balance to these days. It does a great job. So we have greens here, oranges and yellows in this area. We have purple here. We have blues up here, purple out here. So um, a lot of different colors happening. So uh, the tint slider, sometimes you'll want to play with that, but that's more of a fine tuning adjustment. Uh, we could play with it here, but I'm pretty confident that I'm happy with where it was, uh, with what it shot at, which I believe was 22. Okay, there we go. So now that we have our white balance appropriately set um, to show all the different colors in the sky, I'm going to take off the vibrance and the saturation. By the way, uh, of course, this is all stylistically, um, it, it's going to vary individual to individual. Some people are going to want to make their sky look more blue, maybe more green. So it's really up to the photographer. Um, from this point, my next adjustment is the white slider. 
Uh, right now, the, the entire image has a pretty flat look to it, not a lot of contrast. Once we use the white slider, what that's going to do is it's really going to pop out these very bright sections of the Milky Way. What happens when you do that is it brightens up a lot of other areas and that chunky Milky Way section kind of blends into the rest of that brightness. So what we do after that, I've set it to 56 here, uh, is I'm going to take the highlight slider and I'm going to pull down the highlights. So what that does is we've kind of set our white point so we brightened up this area as much as we wanted to brighten it up. In doing so, it brightened up a lot of the surrounding areas. So I slid, uh, I just took the highlight slider and I slid it into the negative and it, it took some of these bright spots on the outside of the Milky Way away. So we're already doing quite a bit better. Now, as we look at the image right now, our foreground compared to the sky, the sky is pretty bright compared to the foreground. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to take this graduated filter and this is going to vary image to image. Uh, but some of the major adjustments that I do almost on every Milky Way image is I'm going to pop up the contrast to about 20. I'm going to take clarity up to around 30. Click from above. And really, I just want to apply this adjustment to the sky, not the uh, foreground. What that does is we're just adding some more uh, contrast to the sky, which is going to make the colors a little more vibrant, and it's going to uh, make the Milky Way a little more dynamic. So this looks good. I'm going to take it one step further and grab this brush tool. Once I have the brush tool pulled up, it's saved the same adjustments that I made with the graduated filter. So contrast is still at 18, uh, clarity at around 30. And the flow that I use when I make brush adjustments in most images, daytime or nighttime, usually I put the flow around 23 and that gives a nice subtle um, adjustment. So all I want to focus on while using the brush tool is the section where the Milky Way is. So I'm going to grab here, I'm just going to start brushing this, adding a little contrast and clarity. Okay, this I'm doing a bit of a rough, a rough job here, but it'll show what we're wanting to show here. Okay, so I've made that adjustment. Uh, for those of you who don't know this about the brush tool or the graduated filter tool, if you, ha you have this button here on any adjustments that you've made, if you select it and it turns black, it has this inner black circle, that means you can go over here and you can make adjustments and it's going to adjust the photo. Okay. So that's kind of made things pop out a little bit more. Let's add maybe even a little contrast. My computer's acting a little slow right now. Okay. Uh, from there, I'm, I'm starting to be pretty happy with the sky portion of the image. Uh, right now, we might actually be a little bit too green. I might want to pull the magenta up a little bit using the tint slider. Okay. And I, I want to show some of those colors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of vibrance uh, and probably a little saturation. So. To give people a little clarity on these tools, the vibrance and saturation tools, those are both, uh, they both control the intensity of color. Uh, the difference between the two, vibrance slider is going to adjust the cooler colors first. So uh, greens, blues, purple, magenta, it's going to adjust those in a more dramatic fashion. So you see that things got really crazy, popped out all those colors like crazy up here. It did also adjust the orange. But with the saturation, that affects the warmer temperatures faster. So red, orange, yellow. So it made this stuff look really crazy. And of course, it did intensify this as well. 
So, uh, I'm going to add some vibrance just to, you know, your personal preference, however much you like it. Uh, and I think I'm going to add a little uh, saturation as well because I want to pull out the uh, orange and yellow colors in the Milky Way as well. So let's pull those up a little. Just a little pop. I went to positive nine and it's done quite a job. Now when I did that, it really affected these cliffs here. What's happening here, what makes Zion a unique place for nighttime photography is it's kind of the perfect amount of light pollution from a nearby town. It's, it's the town called Springdale. It sits right in the mouth of Zion Canyon and that's what's illuminating these cliffs. But what adding that saturation has done is it's made this too saturated. So what I, I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab a graduated filter, click on that. We don't want to make these clarity and contrast adjustments anymore. And I want to bring down the saturation because this is too much here. Click from the bottom and drag up. Now I'm kind of using the the easy shortcut version right now. Uh, you know, the more detailed way to do this would be to use the brush tool and fine tune everything that way. But uh, just for the sake of time, we'll do it this way. Maybe even adjust the temperature, cool it down a little bit, try and make it look as natural as possible. Of course, what's what's illuminating it really is the street lights, which are very, very warm. So it's going to be a little bit difficult to make it look 100% natural, but we're doing pretty well here. Uh, overall, as I look at this, I think it looks nice, but I'm, I'm going to try and add a little contrast as well. Every once in a while, I'll add a contrast adjustment to the image. Yeah, I think that looks pretty nice. Uh, one of the things with nighttime photography is you're shooting at really high ISOs. Uh, ISOs that we're always taught to not shoot at, but it's just the nature of the beast. You have to in order to get a good exposure. Uh, so you get quite a bit of noise. Uh, this was shot with a D800. Uh, comparable camera in Canon is the 5D Mark III, and those actually handle, uh, I feel like, quite a bit better. Uh, but of course, both cameras are quite amazing. Okay, so it, you have to be quite delicate with the noise reduction on these nighttime images with the high ISOs because it really muddies up the image uh, and takes away the pop of the Milky Way. So even if you were to go to, you know, 35, uh, already, we're only at 30 actually, and it's, it's really muddied things up here. It's muddy things up there. You don't have the sharpness on the edges that you need. So usually I'll go to around 18, 15, something like that. Uh, next thing I, I said I'd touch on is the lens correction. We have some pretty bad distortion here. So we're just going to compensate for that. Uh, going to the lens correction tab and go to manual. And we're going to go into the positive. You know, if you're shooting a wide angle lens and you're getting bad distortion from it, uh, you go to the positive. Now, I shot 16 millimeters on this image, and it's a very good idea to shoot with your widest angle lens when you're shooting Milky Way images. Um, and again, that will be a topic for the next uh, video tutorial that we do. So when you do this, you get these weird uh, vignettes that you have to crop out. Okay. And I'm not going to fine tune this much just for saving you guys some time. Uh, okay, so, you know, really as I look at the image, overall I'm happy. I think the color of this orange is still a little too intense. I would do some fine tuning there still, uh, but again, for the sakes of your time, I'm just going to uh, not worry about that too much, but just to show you guys the beginning and after images, uh, this is it. So a rather dramatic difference. 
uh, in terms of tonality, much better contrast in this image, as well as the range of color uh, in the Milky Way. So I hope this was helpful. Feel free to take a look at our website at zion-photography.com to look at the different trips that we offer as well as the different workshops that we offer throughout the year. Um, hope you enjoyed the video and uh, please like if you liked it. Thanks.